Today's episode is sponsored by Spartan Chemical Company. Family owned and operated since 1956, Spartan Chemical is a leading manufacturer of superior and cost-effective specialty chemical products sold through select trusted distributors. Spartan Chemical makes clean simple. For more information, please visit spartanchemical.com. How often have you read articles, attended a presentation, or asked for professional assistance when looking to hire for a critical sales position in your company? If you've ever been challenged by something like that, then today's topic is perfect for you. And I'm pleased to welcome an expert in this, Ed Marsh. He's a growth and strategy consultant and founder and principal of Concilium Global Business Advisors. Ed, thank you for coming back again. Well, and thank you, as always, for having me, Jeff. I always enjoy our conversations. This one's a good one. It's something everyone talks about all the time because they can't figure it out. Right. There's many typical ways to find and hire anyone for any position, but a salesperson is critical. You have some ideas. Run through what those are. Tell us what we should shelve and what we should keep. What are your thoughts? Well, I think the first thing is to just acknowledge the fact that hiring a salesperson is different. I mean, you can check for domain skills when you hire a controller or you know um, an engineer or something like that but sales is a different job sales is the only job where the 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 people they're working with want to make them fail and and so i mean you have to hire for a different set of skills the other problem that we have is that our traditional approaches um you know uh, resumes traditional interviews are both really only about 18 percent effective at hiring, uh, predicting and hiring a salesperson that's actually going to produce. Personality tests are a common thing. Behavioral tests are only about 22% effective. IQ tests are only 50% effective. So if if we just sit down and chat with people, we waste a ton of time going through resumes. We waste a ton of money on recruiters, on ramp up time, on folks that never work out, on the opportunity cost of empty territory. So we got to do something different. But we got to be really careful because we might think we're being more empirical when, in fact, the tools that we're using actually aren't helping very much. So talk about data and analytics and the things you feel can help with this. Because I agree. I know on social media, I see more companies offering resume services than ever before. So I know people are using those. But like you said, they may not be working. What do you think? Well, I mean, we know statistically that resumes are only 18% predictive of somebody's ability to succeed in a job. And we also kind of understand instinctively that even good people exaggerate on resumes. And you know, in certain kinds of subtle ways, everyone's doing their best job to put their best foot forward on a resume. So we have to back up. We have to figure out how we can actually measure, identify, and then measure the critical competencies that will determine not only whether somebody can sell, but whether they will sell and whether they will sell in your specific environment with the size of the transaction, the kind of buyers you're selling to, the length of the sales cycle, the person in the organization they call on. All of those are important factors. So somebody might have done a great job selling office supplies on a one call close to an office manager and small businesses, but struggle trying to sell five-year cleaning engagements to enterprise customers where they're dealing with the director of procurement and the vice president of facilities. It's a very different kind of sale. So we got to make sure that we're hiring based on those competencies. So I believe that there's 21 that can be very specifically identified and measured, and we can test for them in a way that's 91% predictive and will actually help us identify people who not only can sell, but those who will sell. You said 21? 
That's correct. <laughs> that seems like a lot. How do you, how does that work? Well, there's a variety of factors. There's mindset, you know, what's somebody's motivation like? There's their determination, their commitment to do what it takes ethically to get it done. There are specific tactical skills, their ability to get to a decision maker, their ability to qualify a deal, their ability to close, whether they can sell consultatively. And then there's a range of skills that um, I think in my world, we tend to call sales DNA, which are more um, kind of attributes. It's about their grit. It's about how willing they are and how able they are to do the things that sales requires. I mean, even things, for instance, like willingness to have tough conversations. Sometimes salespeople are so concerned about being liked and, you know, everyone likes being liked. It's nice to be a nice person to have people like you, but it's, selling isn't about being liked. It's about getting the deal. And sometimes you have to be able to ask hard questions and, and some people just really struggle with that. So we measure for all those kinds of things in order to reach a decision. Thank you. Uh, you know, I've hired people in the past and when you get a whole bunch of resumes, it's tough to figure it out. Can you talk about the prep work a company or a, a, a professional should do to get fewer resumes or fewer applicants, but good ones? Well, I would say we want more applicants, but we only want to spend time talking to the right ones. And, and I'd answer this question a couple of ways. Number one, if you only hire when you have a problem, then you've got your back against the wall and you're inclined to hire somebody to fix the problem. So in other words, you finally acknowledge the fact that you had to fire somebody that wasn't performing or somebody left on short notice that you weren't expecting them to leave, you know, a spouse took a job somewhere else in the country or whatever the case may be, or you've got an empty territory that you got to do something about. So when you're in that position, then you're scrambling trying to find a person. So number one is have an efficient process, efficient enough that you can run it all the time. Just let it run in the background, just like you do your prospecting. You're always looking for new prospects at the same time. Always be looking for great reps at the same time. That way you've got a pipeline and you know, you may come across some talent that's so great, you're going to make a position for them. you got to have them. The other thing is to use a process. Just like your members use a process, they go into some place to clean a facility. They've got a process for doing it. They don't do it a different way every time because the results would be crazy. Well, we need a process for hiring. And that starts with a great job posting, not a description. A job posting talks about the person we want not some kind of a stale recitation of all the tasks they do all day long. We want to describe the person, get them excited. The right person will see that and they'll say, that's me, you know, and, and they'll be excited to do it. We also want to use an assessment test and we want to do it as a first step in the process. That's important because it's EEOC regulation. It's also important because that way we'll only spend our time with those who we know can sell. And then we can begin to gauge their likability and their cultural fit and their their particular domain expertise and all those kinds of things. And then there's a number of steps that we can go through from there. But having a process, running it all the time, having it be efficient, only spend time with people who you know actually have a likelihood of being able to sell helps you manage the cost, manage the time involved, and keep this process running so you've always got a good pipeline of candidates. 